Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at voltage monitoring on Gigabyte Z390 uh, motherboards. Now, the motherboard I'm using here today is uh, this thing, the Z390 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, so the little ITX one. Um, and the reason why I'm using this one is this one's just more convenient for this demonstration than the other ones. So anyway, we're going to be looking at what software sensor to trust and which one not to trust. And uh, well, um, w we can also take a bit of a look at, well, now nah, we're just going to look at which sensors to trust. We can, we can cover load line calibration settings when, when we have a motherboard that has a full set of them. Because this board doesn't have all of the load line calibration setting, uh, all of the lo necessary load line calibration settings. Because, uh, well, it maxes out, um, like it has less settings, because uh, this board, um, the VRM on it isn't very strong. So Gigabyte did the reasonable thing, and they limited the maximum, sort of, like they limited how much, lo like how much VDROOP you can remove um, wh while the motherboard still works. So, well, how much VDROOP you can remove. So, yeah, essentially it reduces the loading on the VRM because... It means, like, if you want to run, like, 1.4 volts under load, you'd need to set, like, 1.5, right? Which, uh, which like, nobody is going to actually run that, hopefully. Um, so that prevents people from, like, breaking the board by, by restricting how much voltage you have access to. But uh, anyway, so we have some Prime95 version uh, 29, I think. Um, is there somewhere options, advanced, no? Help about there, yeah, version twenty nine point four, um, which you probably can't see. So, um, zoom. Ah, there, I'm gonna fire. There we go. Yeah, so there, version twenty nine. Um, anyway, so. That's the version we're on, and this is like the most AVX version you can possibly get. But first we're going to check out our voltage readings at idle. So at idle, this is reading 1.416 volts, and actually let's zoom in on that. So 1.416, and then here we have VRV out, which uh, right now it's reading, so now we're idling again, it's reading 1.418, 1.42. And if we check it with our lovely multimeter over here, which, zoom in touch there so if we check that with our multimeter which i do have a bunch of wiring like wires going to the motherboard unfortunately that is wired up wrong and i am sick and tired of redoing that wire like redoing that um so we're, we're just gonna yolo it here and and just stab a capacitor on the motherboard while it's running because that's that's a really good way to short right across your feedback circuitry and then kill everything um but as we can clearly see right now, we are getting just under 1.4, yeah, just about 1.41 volts. So the software is reading a tad, it's a touch high, right? It's reading a touch high, but that's fine. So now we're gonna zoom out and we're gonna start our lovely test by fire. Um, if I could remember where it said test is there. Um, so we're gonna go small FFTs and test by fire start. Now this is not quite as current heavy as what you'd get on like a, a 9900K, but it is still a lot of current, right? Um, if we zoom in on that and, and move this out of the way. So yeah, we're, we're getting 125 amps right now. Now if we were running a higher load line calibration, we could actually be hitting 160 amps and the CPU would very shortly thermal throttle. Um, so that's why I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're getting 125A, um, though admittedly I could have lowered the voltage. Anyway, well, this is just quick demonstration. So we're getting about 125 amps, which is about 50 less. Than, well, no, not 50, but that's about 30 amps less than what you can easily hit on a 9900K. If you want to go much past 160 amps on a 9900K, you need to look into some relatively exotic cooling methods like direct dye. Well, you need to deal it at the very least if you don't want to go sub-zero. So... Um, yeah, because the, the chip becomes uncoolable very, very quickly. Anyway, if we look up here at the vCore reading up here, this is uh, way too high, right? And that's the reading from the ITE 
uh, 8688E Super I.O. chip. Uh, and then this is from the actual voltage controller, the IR35201. This is reading like 1.3 volts, and so that we have quite a bit of e-droop here, and that's fine because I set it to be on the high setting, not the uh, not the ultra LLC setting. So I, I expect this amount of e-droop. Um, but yeah, this is reading like 70 millivolts higher than the other. So which one do you think is correct? And on that note, also, do you think CPU Z is correct? Because uh, that, that's always a fun one. Does CPU-Z monitor voltage properly? So CPU-Z seems to be in agreement with the, the Super I.O. chip. Okay. Right? So CPU-Z also reading 1.368. So then, which one's actually correct? Well, uh, let's just not kill the motherboard one last time. Very carefully. Do my roaming. And we can clearly see that the, well, that the IR35201 is actually reading a bit high. Um, so yeah, that's, that's its own uh, monitoring circuitry, and that's at 1.28 volts. And actually, if we, if we check the circuit, like the, the wiring I have hooked up, I think that's actually going to read dead on right now. But the thing is, at higher LLC settings, this was reading, now this isn't working. Oh, no, just not getting the probes in. Okay, so this is still reading a bit high. So, yeah, um, CPU-Z is reading garbage. Um, the Super I.O. chip, which is what CPU-Z is referencing, is also reading garbage. And uh, basically, if you're using any gigabyte motherboard, um, that's Z390, or I think otherwise, because I think they expose all of their boards, um, like the, the voltage controller, you want to be looking at the voltage reading for this this sensor right here um, and this one's really really accurate and the reason why we can trust this reading right here is because of how that 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 is actually wired up so i'm just gonna zoom out again gonna stop my prime 95 test because the vrm's starting to cook here so <laughs> yeah we already what what did we hit we hit 104 on the vrm already so we, we've already kind of started to cook the vrm but the thing is, the way that is wired is if we do a transition here. So this is the 35201, and basically what I was measuring, the, the pin on there. Actually, we can, can try point the, can try get the camera to zoom in on that area. Oh. And I'm just going to give you a... Oops, too much zoom. So, yeah, there. So, I was measuring the voltage, and I'm trying to find something to point with that's made of plastic and not metal so that I don't short the board. But I was measuring off of uh, that little capacitor over there, right? That one. And that capacitor is right across um, the VCPU pin, right here, pin 5, and pin 8. So, it's right over those. And those two pins of the voltage controller are hooked into this part of the LGA1151 socket. And I actually verified this when I was doing, like, w on the motherboard when I was messing around with it. So that's hooked into VSS uh, and VCC sense. And this is accurate for, for voltage readings because um, basically the problem is, I think, and that's just the multimeter turning off, um, but I think what basically happens is the Super I.O. chip is probably sensing the voltage somewhere on the power plane or somewhere on the motherboard, so before the CPU socket. And the thing is, there's a bunch of voltage drop through the CPU socket itself, because it's made up of a bunch of little pins, and unfortunately, like, the, 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 uh, the fact of it is the LGA socket is actually relatively high electrical resistance compared to something like, say, uh, like the, the PGA stuff AMD uses. So, um, what basically happens is you get a whole bunch of voltage drop, which is why um, when we go back into hardware info, why this sensor up here is reading way higher voltage than this one down here, because this one is not actually measuring the, uh, like this one's measuring somewhere on the motherboard, I'm not sure where, 
This one's actually measuring um, on the CPU package proper because that one's hooked through the pins that it, uh, like Intel provides specifically for that functionality. Like those pins are there so that you can monitor the voltage on the CPU package proper. So that voltage reading right there is very, very accurate. The other thing to know is that the Super IO chip is actually really lim limited in its resolution. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it goes in 12 millivolt, like just looking at how it goes up and down, I'm pretty sure it goes in 12 millivolt increments. Which is also why if you're like setting your voltage in the BIOS, um, which incidentally, the uh, 35201, which I'm not sure how many people are aware of this, but um, there's a lot of motherboards out there which will allow you to adjust your core voltage by say one millivolt increments. This is completely crap because the IR35201 and basically any other Intel compatible voltage controller that I'm aware of, at least for the LGA 1151 socket in its current incarnation, those all work in five millivolt steps. You can't actually adjust the core voltage in less than five millivolt uh, values. That's not possible. The controller doesn't have that amount of resolution. This voltage monitoring, the, the sensor here has even like, so this has crap resolution. This has good resolution, but you can't actually uh, control it by less than five millivolt steps. So basically any motherboard that lets you adjust the voltage by like one millivolt up down, um, you're adjusting it by five. Like it, it will round up or down to the nearest five millivolts, depending on how the board is, how, how the BIOS is implemented, because the voltage controllers themselves do not support one millivolt increments. Um, so yeah, that, that is something worth noting. They, they can monitor smaller than one millivolt increments, but uh, they, they can't actually adjust the, by that much. And on AMD, they actually go by like 6.25 millivolt increments. So that, that's another thing worth noting is just like, um, there, there's a limit to how, how, how uh, accurately you can adjust your core voltage. And I, I've seen some people complain that gigabyte motherboards don't allow you to, well, I've seen one complaint that gigabyte motherboards don't allow you to adjust core voltage by one millivolt. And the thing is, that's not the motherboard being bad. That's just the limit of the chips that are used for this socket. Now, I know on Intel, like if you look at like Intel CPUs using an integrated voltage controller, I mean, integrated voltage regulator, not controller. Well, technically there's a controller built in there as well, but um, if it has an integrated voltage regulator and it's like an Intel CPU, so we're talking like Haswell, Broadwell, uh, Broadwell, Broadwell E, Haswell E, Skylake X, um, right? All of these CPUs with the integrated voltage regulators, those can actually go in one millivolt increment because the integrated voltage regulator supports that. But for everything else, you're looking at either five millivolt or 6.25 uh, millivolt uh, voltage adjustments. So yeah, that's, that's also something worth noting um, when, when you're setting your voltages. And yeah, CPU-Z reads, reads the, the, the crappy voltage sensor. Um, so yeah, so if you're on a Gigabyte Z390 motherboard and you want to read your core voltage as it's actually being fed into the CPU, you want to be looking at your VR, V out voltage reading. Um, and that's that. And also the five millivolt increments for core voltage are normal. That, that's just how the chip works. And I just missed the BIOS. Well, whatever. Um, so yeah, that, that's it for the video. Right? I, I didn't manage to kill the board. Um, board still works. Uh, system still works. And uh, yeah. So. Hop. Just going to tilt it over like that. And um, yeah. So that is it for the video. Um, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. Uh, hopefully this was uh, helpful. It should be because I've seen a lot of people like wondering about what, what voltage readings to trust. So you trust VR out. Okay, VR V out. Um, and uh, what else is there? Right, thank you to Gigabyte for providing the motherboard. Thank you for team, to Team Group for providing the memory sticks. Um, and oh yeah, EVGA power supply. Thanks to them as well. <laughs> Is there anything in the CPU's build zone actually? Oh, well, technically, I guess everything, but is there anything in this build that isn't a gift? Well, that and the, the CPU, the 8086K. Um, oh, and the 710, uh, the GT710 GPU here. But anyway, so yeah, uh, thanks to Gigabyte and everybody else for, for providing the, uh, providing the uh, relevant components. 
And uh, yeah, if you'd like to support the channel, um, I've got a Patreon and T-shirts you can buy. You can find a link, uh, find a link to all of that down in the description below. Actually, it should be two separate links at this point. But um, yeah, that that is it. And uh, thanks for watching. And see you next time. I think I said everything at this point, so I guess I'll just hit the stop button. See ya.